Okay, hey everyone, Joy Joy here. So today our manager came and knocked on the door and wanted us to sign this contract. So here's the deal. Um, we have always paid our rent on time. Uh, we've always paid early. We always even paid like a day early. We, I just like doing that always. Like if I pay on the, the day it's due, I always feel like that's late. But we always paid and then until this whole COVID thing happened and in the beginning we still even paid. We paid as long as we could. Like I was stretching as much as we could in the beginning and um, we were paying and paying and then it just got to where we couldn't stretch anymore and it came down to food or rent. And we live that minimally that we don't even have any sort of savings. So um, we have to sell things when we get down to the bottom. It, business has just gone down the toilet here. The casinos were closed for 78 days and now since they've been open, it still has not been good in Vegas. But they came today and they wanted us to sign this, which we were just talking about this before they turned it on. I believe if we sign this, we're going to be even more liable. Because see, we live in a weekly right now. So technically, we never had any sort of contract with them. Like we, um, what would happen normally is if we didn't pay, they would have evicted us. That's just how it happens here. You pay weekly. And if you don't pay weekly, then you get kicked out. But with this COVID, um, no one, they couldn't evict. And this is happening all over Vegas. We're not the only ones. I mean, she's going around with a stack in her hand of everyone that she's giving this to. Because what happened was no one could pay. And um, it was people thinking that people just did it because, uh, oh, free rent. No, it was, there was no business in Vegas. Everyone is hurting and it became like, what it, what it, can you get food or pay your rent? Well, they can't evict, so we're just gonna have to go with the food and, and figure it out when they evict. And now everyone's in a boat, and that's what we're in. So we decided to go to Panama, because it was like, we owe $5,000 now, is what she told me today. So this one, she gave me a couple of weeks, like a week ago or something, when we first found it was a little bit less. Now it's up to 5,000. Um, and she wanted me to sign it, and I was like, well, I'm not going to sign it because I think we're leaving. And she's like, what? When are you leaving? And I'm like, well, as soon as you guys kick us out <laughs> would be when we're leaving here. Um, you know, and like, as you guys know, we're, we got our plane tickets for September 30th, but there's a good chance we're going to be kicked out of here before September 30th because they can start evicting September 1st. But she said it could take up to a month. Or it could be like five days or seven days, you know, so we'll just see and we just have to wait. And it's, it, we hate this. I mean, we do not like being people that like stiff people with bills and stuff. That's not our, our we are not okay with that. It's like we don't like that. Um, but this is out of our control, you guys. Vegas went down the toilet. I mean, it, with the COVID and it's not recovering. Like even people, go, oh, I went to the casinos and they were busy, but you're going to a handful of casinos when the majority are closed. So like all of the traffic is in like the five casinos. So it'll feel busy, but that's not enough for Vegas to survive. But here's some other crazy news for Vital Vegas. If you guys ever heard of Vital Vegas on Twitter, it's Scott Robin. Um, it, he he used to be on the, the news once. So that's when I first saw him here in Vegas. I think he was on Channel Eight. He he do, did like a little thing about things happenings in Vegas, and he's been doing a Twitter for a long time, and he has a, a website. Well, um, he has like seventy three thousand followers or something. So he's like pretty big in Vegas, and we've always tweeted him. Well, recently he put a statement on Twitter saying, and I think he also probably put a blog on his website, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know too far, to, yeah, I think there was a blog too, um, stating that Sahara was going to close in September is what he had heard. He had heard because I think he talks to a lot of bartenders and things because um, he goes to the bars and the casinos and plays, so you hear a lot of rumblings. So he said, uh, you know, rumor, but he said they're going to be closing in September. Well, whether that was true or not, Sahara is now suing him and this is pretty big because he's a blogger so this is like kind of like a crazy thing that now someone as a blogger is being held accountable for the things they're saying because you, you can impact things and you can legally because um, you all have freedom of speech or whatever but there are things that like if you were causing you know um, certain things were like what he said people then cancel they're saying that 
people then canceled their tickets because they thought it was going to be closed in September. And so they uh, might be able to hold him liable for some of these damages and things of and some of the loss. But what's crazy is they're probably going to blame him for more losses than what's really going on because everyone is losing right now. But it was a crazy thing for us. I just saw it today, Fox 5, Las Vegas, tweeted it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy because um, it's just a, you don't, you know, like, we've always tried to be very careful with what we say, but we've definitely stepped on a lot of toes in the past. But luckily, we don't have any money, so no one would have even bothered to sue us. If someone tried to sue us, I'd be like, hey, do you mind if I borrow money for a lawyer? <laughs> but yeah, the long story short with that was the card got, you know, it got broken down. This was before the cave thing. Uh, it broke it down, and it was on the side of the road. So first it got broken into. So we called the police. They came out, and they said, oh, call tomorrow about the car because uh, well, they were dealing with other stuff. And by and we called the next day, and they weren't there. It was a Saturday because it happened on Friday. And they were like, oh, the detectives won't be in until Monday. Call back on Monday. Well, the guys came back and stole the car in between the time when the, the detectives weren't working because it was the weekend. So we call about our car being broken into, and then while the detectives are not working, the whole thing gets stolen. So And then when I went to the police station to try to tell the story, she tried to, like, claim that I would, like... Uh, was doing something fraudulent. I said, we're not doing an insurance claim. We're not getting any money. I'm not, I don't know what kind of fraudulent thing I'm doing here. We had no insurance claim, you guys. We didn't get any money for the car. We didn't do an insurance claim. Yeah, I just told you we're not getting any money. We're out our whole car. Whatever. Anyway, so Scott Robin, Vital Vegas, this is really big. Um, I don't know what he's thinking right now. Like, I don't know what his thought process is. I don't, I don't know all the legalities of what they can hold against him what they can't because you know it's tough with social media this is kind of like a new thing with social media like some of the things happening now like have you guys heard like <laughs> trump's taking down tiktok this is just the weirdest things going on i mean it's just oh and then what was it jared told me that uh, trump put something on um on facebook and instagram was it and then saying that the virus was not as deadly as people were saying but for children that children are, you know, be fine. And they took that down. So it's weird stuff going on of like social media censoring and not censoring and weird stuff, you guys. This is a very strange time we're living in and we're seeing a lot of things being unraveling, like government stuff of like, we didn't, like, I didn't realize there was so much personal vendetta that occurred in the government of like, literally people just hate each other and that's why they're fighting so much, like in the sense of, um, a lot of people just validly hate Trump. Now, I am not a Trump supporter. People think when I start talking like this that I'm a Trump supporter in some way when I say that these people hate Trump. That doesn't mean I am on his side. I'm saying they validly hate Trump, so they are trying to take him down. I'm not saying, like, in a, oh, he's a victim here in their bullies. I'm stating a fact. They hate him. They don't want him to be president. They're trying to take him down. Now, validly, a lot of the reason why they hate him, like when they put um, the children in cages at the border, a lot of people did not agree with that, and I did not agree with that. And um, a lot of people did not agree with the uh, tax on China, which uh, made everything more expensive for the average person and the average business for all the products we get from China. Um, a lot of people don't agree with some of the the uh, you know things he's done with the wars we've gone to already or little deals he's been making on the side or all the russian stuff so validly these people can hate him i'm just saying i never realized that they would take such action on personal vendettas like literally these some of these democrats just hate him so much <clears throat> i actually um have a lot of respiratory problems from my years of bulimia. I am healing, so when I um, I smoke weed, it is actually healing all of the stuff going on from all these years. Uh, so it sounds bad when I cough, but it's actually healing. But anyways, um, what's happened is I believe that uh, people have just jumped on this virus thing. Um, as just a way to really excuse anything they want to push right now. It's like, oh, um, you know, like, and a lot of people are using it as a scapegoat. Like, oh, the reason why our company's doing bad is because of the COVID when they were already doing bad.
So that is the case with a lot of the casinos in Vegas. They were already not doing very well. They were selling casinos like crazy here. You know, um, there was a lot of fraud happened like with the Palms Casino. Um, you know, that one's closed now indefinitely until someone buys it, I guess. Um, but there was already all uh, kind of a fraud with that club, the Chaos Club. So there was issues in Vegas, especially, especially since the Mandalay Bay shooting. But now everyone's going to just use the COVID as an excuse for any sort of loss they've had, you know, for the last couple of years. Oh. And um, they also are using it like so politically that I know it's not as serious as they're trying to say it is. Because if it was, then politics would be out the window. And they really have done a really bad job containing it because we are all interacting and stuff and we would have all got it if it was really the deadliness that they're acting but then also they wouldn't have even cared about elections during this time if there was truly like if there was like a deadly virus like in history where it came in and just wiped out everyone if you got it I mean you just died then it wouldn't matter who was running for president right now but no instead you hear oh deadly virus but oh make sure to vote for Biden or vote for Trump or vote for whoever. I don't even know who's all in the runnings this year because I just don't care. All of this stuff is political. So it doesn't matter because I think they're all terrible candidates and I think they've all used their own personal vendettas and have destroyed the government. You can see over the last however many months we've been going through this nightmare, I have not met one person that has actually said that they knew someone right like immediately to them that died from it. I've heard people say, oh, I had someone that got it. Oh man, it was really hairy. Oh man, you don't want to get it. I'm like, yeah, no one wants to get the flu, but if you're, if you're living to tell about it, then it ain't all that deadly. Oh, it's so bad. You don't want to get it. You're going to die. I mean, I live, but you're going to die. Okay. So uh, I, I mean, maybe you guys have like all these family members that are just dying like crazy from the COVID and I'm sorry. <sighs> If I'm wrong, you know, message me about it. I remember if you guys go back, I was doing these blogs in the beginning and I was get so upset about this because I knew Vegas was going to be done and I cried the first day we went to the strip after the shutdown, which I don't remember what day it was. It was maybe day three or something. And I started bawling because I knew it was done and I knew some way we were done. And that made me sad because I liked Vegas, but we're, we're leaving. And... I feel bad about leaving this bill here. I mean, that I don't like that. Believe me, I'm not someone that I'm actually one of those people that um, I'll even like, I, I, I don't want to say like turn down money, but I'm someone that I will not, uh, like I, I don't just say, you know how people do anything for money. I'm not, I will, no, I will do what I feel is right. I will not just do anything for money. And so I also don't feel comfortable stiffing people about money, but sometimes the world shuts down. It was 11 p.m. we went to MGM and there was babies rolling on the floor. Jerry Rich has a video of it. Like just rolling around, playing on the ground, and then these guys were jogging <laughs> to MGM. I'm like, what is going on here? I think they were trying to catch the bus or something. I don't know, but they were literally jogging. It's, it's on Twitter, it's funny. And I'm like, this is just so weird. And then there's been this new thing of like everyone swimming in the fountains. Have you guys heard about this? Supposedly one guy, I think, even died in one of the fountains, but I, I don't know for sure. I, I just heard a little bit on Twitter, but weirdest crowd here right now. And it's not what Vegas wants in the sense of these people don't have money. Um, me and Jai Rich made a, a, a joke that if you had to charge them 25 cents to go on the strip, they would choose a different route, this group. I mean, they don't want to pay for anything. It's like becoming like a shitty Disneyland, so we're leaving. And I didn't want to leave. I love Vegas, and it was actually... You know, it had not done well since 2017, and then this March looked like it was going to have a little bit of a turnaround, you know, because we were going to have the NFL draft here in April, and then March is uh, March Madness, and then the Raiders were coming now, um, and it was going to be an awesome year, and then all this happened, and I feel like people say, oh, well, we can't help it, a virus happened. And so now we, as, as people, are suffering. Um, where the government, they're going to bounce right back, you know. They, they'll be fine, especially, you know, even people with government jobs. You know, you, you 
bounce right back. But it's everyone that had a job that maybe won't bounce right back, like bartenders, waitresses, and cocktail servers, um, anyone entertainment, anyone doing shows, um, concerts, even like rock stars and stuff. For every big person, there's small people that um, took care of that that now don't have jobs. So every casino had, you know, probably 5,000 or so employees that now don't have jobs when that casino doesn't come back. And they don't have anywhere else to go because there isn't another casino. And casino is one example, but let's say a restaurant. Now the restaurants that are all at 50% capacity are the ones that didn't return at all. All those people that were cooks, the line servers, you know, everything, the waiters and waitresses, budget, like every position, dishwashers, now doesn't have a job. And where are these people gonna go? Because I don't feel that we truly got quarantined. I don't feel like I truly was like, oh man, I'm safe from the virus. I mean, they had us all still going to the same places, like the grocery stores all along. They just recently had us putting on masks for the first month. Everyone was just walking around going, hoarding shit at the grocery stores, running into each other, grabbing toilet paper, no masks and fighting over toilet paper. I, I wear my mask on the bus and in places like stores or casinos, but I would not wear a mask walking around outside. It is like 110 degrees here. There, there's no way, and not even the cops do here. And they also said they wouldn't enforce it because that's ridiculous. You can't enforce people to put on masks with 110 degrees when they're walking outside. And I get so tired of hearing the sob stories of someone's grandma and grandma, not just with the COVID. When I watch TV, it's like they're, they're horrible thing that happened in their life they're they're like one thing you know you watch these music shows where they're like oh, yeah i was cruising on and my grandma died and everything just uh. i'm like it's your grandma of course they're gonna die i mean my grandparents died when i was pretty young most of them i think i have like one living grandparent but your grandparents will die usually before you and it should be before you it's very unfortunate if grandkids die before grandparents so like this idea that your hardship was your grandparents dying and if your grandparents died during the covid they're still your grandparents they were going to die at some point i mean this idea that dying is just so the end of uh, ends and like my mother committed suicide and my brother died in a motorcycle accident so i know about death so when people go oh you just don't have any sympathy oh really no i freaking know how much it sucks to lose someone i'm just saying you can't live your whole life of like well, grandma died, so now it's everything, the, uh, you know, the world's fun. And like this, we're like, we're shutting down the whole world for some people's grandparents dying. That's insane. That's insanity. Do you not see how that's insane? Like, now more people are affected, and people are going to die in other ways, like suicide and stuff. The suicide rate has gone up because people don't have jobs, and they're depressed, and they're stuck at home. So what about those people? But I'm glad we saved Susie's grandma. And did we? I don't know. I mean, was she, you know, probably if she lived, it's because she's healthy and the ones that didn't weren't healthy. You know what I mean? So it's like, and people get so upset with me when it comes to things about death because they're just like, oh, how dare you laugh at death or say that it's not important when someone dies or this and that. Yes, it's important to the people that were close to that person when that person dies. But for the rest of the world, we should not really give that much of a shit about other people's lives because we have other, the whole rest of the other people's lives. When we focus on one person that died, every other person suffers if we're only focusing on the one person that dies when everyone else is living. Can we stop focusing on the ones that are dead? We're affecting the young people because they're scared of each other now in school that when they even get to go back to school, whenever that'll be. Um, but now because that we put all this fear in the children, stay six feet apart, put masks on, you know, uh, like we're really affecting like the whole next generation to save Susie's grandma. It's insane, you guys. It's absolutely insane. They're making jokes now in Vegas of getting mask tans, so that's something cool, you know, because there's really nothing else they can do is try to make light of this ridiculousness. But people are getting mask tans because you gotta wear a mask at the pool. Whatever, people go, well, maybe I should pay your bills, then you'll, pay, then you'll open the pool. No, they don't open the pool. They didn't open the pool last year, barely, either, because they don't like it if, if, if 
people leave kids unattended, then they shut down the pool for everyone, even though it's not our kids. But like, how come we get punished for someone else's kids? Be it, like, they'll shut down the pool for like a week if someone leaves their kids unattended. 54 days till we leave. Oh, here's the thing. <coughs> That's right. We're so, have to, uh, you guys, we, we don't have our passports yet. So this is the, we'll people honest. are going to be like, this is going to be one of those things where some people are going to be like, hoping so much that we fail on this one. And this is the thing. So we got our passports on, um, okay, our dates are really a mess to me right now. So what, what are we in? Are we September 30th. In? So we got it on, no, but not that. We got our passports on July 27th. Um, July 27th. So now where are we in? August, let's say the 7th. And now the guy said, normally it takes four to six weeks to get your passports. Um, but uh, you couldn't do any rush thing with this whole COVID thing. And he says, with the COVID, it's going to take eight to 12. But here's the thing. We think that that was, they put, did that in the beginning, like when this first started, because, you know, people were still traveling. Um, so they put that thing. But now when we went to the post office, he saw us like half hour early. There's no one there. There's like... Then when I scheduled the appointment, I could schedule it for any time tomorrow. Like it was like available even that day I could have, but it was like to all, you could schedule the day tomorrow. Normally when I've scheduled for getting passports in the past, you would schedule like a week or two out. So we're thinking it's probably going to be quicker than they said. But even if then we still have nine weeks from the time that we're leaving, from the time we ordered it. So. That would be within the eight week, but not the twelve week. So, here's the, we already bought our tickets. We're gonna leave September thirtieth if we have our passports. Um, and the reason why we don't have passports is because they were stolen in our car. Look at this, you guys. I wanted this water flosser for the trip. For the trip, but watch it, you guys. It's a travel one, so it like this comes off like this, and then this little baby. It's gonna squirt water when I do this, but this goes up Oop, see and then this folds down and then this goes over the top of that and it all goes into like 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 that so it's like a super compact thing and then you just pop it back out so when you're using it but um, um we'll probably have to get another one when we get to Panama but this will be good for travel for now that's unfortunate anyways we're going to Panama though not as soon as long as we get our passports <laughs> but our planes are booked for September 30th and even for um 26 days of um, hotel. And that's it. All right, please subscribe.